And I'm recording. So how's everybody doing? It was a beautiful day in the neighborhood in Charlottesville. Yeah. Today was super lovely. Loving this weather. Good evening, everybody. Um, we still got another minute or so for seven o'clock, so we're just gonna let some other people join us. Uh, in the meantime, let's see if I have any announcements. Um, first, I'd just like to welcome everyone to leave any comments in the Zoom chat, in the Facebook comments, or email us at programs at albemarlehistory.org. You can send us any questions you'd like to try to uh, us to address during the show, or you can send us any suggestions for things you'd like to see in future shows. Um, we are very proud to announce that we have been selected to receive a $15,000 grant from Virginia Humanities for our race and sports oral history project. So far, we have raised about 28,000, but still have a ways to go. This project seeks to tell the story of local high school athletics during the period of desegregation. Since people who were 14 in 1954 are 81 today, the time to collect these stories is pressing. So please help us collect, preserve, and tell this important history by going to albemarlehistory.org slash support, making a donation and type race and sports in the comments. Uh, our walking tour is very popular. Um, I'm filling up the calendar as fast as I can. And uh, so please, if you'd like to take a tour, uh, email me at programs at albemarlhistory.org. Uh, with COVID, we have not been able to pull together the work needed um, for our well like spirit walk, but we are, we will be trying <coughs> to offer some additional theme tours this fall and winter. So stay tuned. Our next program is this weekend in partnership with Charlottesville links incorporated sunday uh, the 26th at 2 p.m we'll have uh, uh breaking down the challenges of doing african-american genealogical research uh, conducting african-american research has its challenges and myths this presentation will walk through the challenges clear up the myths and provide some methods and strategies to help combat those challenges the speaker will be dr viola murphy dr shelley viola murphy uh, ACHS, uh, UVA Descendant Project Researcher, and this is sponsored by the Charlottesville Chapter of the Lynx Incorporated um, and Albemarle Charlottesville Historical Society. You can register for the Zoom meeting. We should be getting a link up in the comments. Um, you can also watch it on Facebook Live. Uh, also, uh, hold the date October 21st for the official opening of the Centennial Exhibit at JMRL Central Branch, which tells the story of the 100 year history of the local public library system. The opening uh, house reception will be from 5 to 7 p.m. on the third floor of Central Branch. No registration needed to attend, just stop on by. And the screening of Lorenzo Dickerson's uh, documentary, titled, um, documentary titled Free and Open to the Public will follow the reception and be held at the Paramount Theater on the downtown mall starting at 7 p.m. Uh, immediately following the showing, Lorenzo Dickerson and David Plunkett will join uh, Tom Chapman, executive director of the Albemarle Marshall Charlottesville Historical Society, in a discussion of the film and the library's storied history. The film premiere is free and open to the public, but registration for free tickets is required. Uh, tickets may be reserved by calling the Paramount's box office at 434-979-1333 or online at the paramount.net or in person at the box office Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. Um, and we have opened our doors to the public, so come visit us. With vaccinations on the rise, we think it's time for us to get back to business as usual. So come on by and visit us. If you are coming to conduct research, give us a call or email ahead uh, to schedule an appointment. It makes it much easier for us to have your research documents, books, files, what other items you'd like to look at ready for you. And that leads me to the last announcement. We are always looking for volunteers to help us out in the library, greeting visitors, leading guided tours, 
or any number of other needs we have at the historical society. So if you can help us out, give us a call at 434-296-1492 or email me at programs at avalonhistory.org. All right, so enough of the announcements. Let's make some history. Tom, the meandering is all yours. Thank you, Sterling. Much appreciated. Um, trying to keep up with the chat here. I think I put a bunch of things out there for everyone to click on if they can for our announcements. Um, I'm Tom Chapman with Sterling Howe here of the Albemarle Charlottesville Historical Society and I'd like to welcome you to Unregulated Historical Meanderings, uh, the Common House edition. Uh, this is our 10th unregulated, unstructured live show uh, in which we invite some person or persons to join us and have a casual conversation about things of interest to our friends uh, here in the Charlottesville, Albemarle area and beyond in the Zoom world. Uh, today, we are proud to welcome Lauren Thomas. Um, Lauren Thomas was born and raised in Charlottesville, Virginia. She is a UVA grad and all around Seaville enthusiast. Um, after teaching high school German for five years, uh, she has since switched careers to now hold the title of Common House Charlottesville's Programming Manager, where she aims to bring more diversity plus new and unique programming into Common House. So Lauren, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. More than welcome. Uh, well, let's start maybe with some basics with maybe some of our audience who are not familiar with Common House. Uh, what is Common House Charlottesville, or, uh, or as I've seen it called in some places, Common House Number One? Common House Number One, yeah, it is our flagship house um, built in 2017. So Common House is a community-centered, member-based social club uh, on Market Street just off the downtown mall, um, where members can gather for co-working, dining, programs, I mean, you name it, sort of, we got it there. Uh, yesterday we had we have music on the roof often, which is really fun and brings a lot of people in. Um, so we've got a restaurant in house that sources uh, local and seasonally um, appropriate ingredients, a rooftop terrace, a private event space. Um, and as a member, you not only get access to Common House number one, but you get access to number two and three in Richmond and Chattanooga. Um, so that is definitely a huge perk of being a member. Um, and more than just your typical club membership, we really aim to provide a truly inclusive space um, that immerses our members in the community via shared experiences. So we want people to be there, be connected uh, with one another. So a membership organization with many perks and programs and, and all kinds of things. Like what else do your members get? I mean, they have a, a wonderful place to go hang out, eat some great food. Yeah, um, parties they get, we partner with a bunch of different, um, we're working on partnering with different hotels for different perks. So if you come to Charlottesville and stay at this hotel, you can come for a day or however long at Common House. Um, there are different, you get a certain percent off if you go to uh, whatever uh, organizations that we partner with. So they get a lot of those different things too, but just the opportunity, I think, to connect with others uh, through shared experiences is one of the biggest perks of Common House. So I see on your website, um, it states, uh, we're on a mission to rebuild the social fabric of communities. Yeah. What is what does that mean? Yeah. So the founders noticed that there was a little bit of a lack in things that that knit communities together. So they were looking at like, oh, bridge clubs and social clubs and things like that. And so um, bringing more people together with like minded things that people all love to do and knitting back together this social fabric uh, of communities, drawing people to one another. OK. So as a, as a membership organization, you know, the Historical Society is a membership organization, but we're, you know, the perks that our members receive, the reality is, is that they're simply our primary supporters. Sure. Uh, they, you know, they rely on, we rely on their generosity as donors um, so that because they share the same mission, the same values, uh, the same vision that we do. 
um, and they see what we're doing and they support our interest in local history. Um, we have dealt with a certain amount of sense of exclus exclusivity, I guess, sure. of being a membership. Um, how does Common House kind of combat, you know, that notion of membership being synonymous with being exclusive? Yeah. Like you are aiming to have a very diverse group of folks that you want to bring into what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And so anybody 21 or up can join. It's not, uh, it's for everybody. And so we try to make that known uh, through programming that educates, through uh, programming that explores intersections of identity and through programming that advocates for racial uh, and social justice in the Common House community and beyond. And so, um, and with some of those things, we realize that not everyone can afford a membership at Common House. It is, I will admit, it's not cheap. Um, and so we do have a common ground program that um, allows people to be chosen for a membership at no cost to them. Um, we also do a bunch of member focus profiles to highlight the amazing things that our members are striving towards in our community also. So we're really trying to get out there, show that um, our membership is not just one type of person. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, so it's a, it's a balance, you know, it's that bottom line of you're being a business. You have, Absolutely, we got to run the business. Some kind of revenue source. Sure something coming in, um, but that, you know, how you shape your membership and how it combines with your mission too. I mean, I think that's a very unique way of approaching, you know, a membership based type of social club. I mean, it kind of gets back to that sense of, you know, the community fabric, the social fabric is kind of broken down. So you need to make money somehow, but at the same time, you're doing this other thing that's really important for the community. Right, absolutely. We want to we want to show that Common House is and can be for everyone, even though I know that it can look a certain way on the outside, but uh, come on in and you will see differently. Because mm -hmm. your members can bring in guests too. They're... Members can bring guests, absolutely. Can always so bring guests. Mm -hmm. It's not like they, you have to leave them at the door, you can bring them in. Bring them in. Absolutely. We welcome and want everyone to come in too. So I saw also that this, this community, this membership of community that um, Common House describes them as a community of creators. Mm -hmm. What, what, what does that, what does that involve? Yeah, so that involves really at Common House, you can find every type of person. I have somebody, someone new coming up to me every day, creators and uh, creatives um, that are 21 years old, creators and creatives that are 50 years old. Um, and so we have this extremely wide range. I just saw a question, is it generational? And it does span many generations. Um, but this community that we want to be creators of relationships to, uh, creators of connection. And so you can take it very literally as there are creators all over <coughs> house. Um, I've had ac everyone everywhere from acupuncturists to um, herbalists, lots of different wellness experts uh, to DJs come and want to create and share what they've got um, at Common House. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked you promote local authors. Yes, actually local. Um, so I've had recently a bunch of local author or two local authors come to me asking if they could do uh, little bits of like live readings of their new books and things like that. And so I'm always looking for um, different local authors who would love to come and promote their work as well. Yeah, you mentioned so anyone from 21 to 50, you know, that's yeah. at uh, the historical society is kind of grappling with too in terms of trying to, you know, how figure out a way to reach that younger generation, that younger demographic. You know, sure. You know, my my daughter tells me like, Dad, you got to get on Instagram. You know, it's like you do like just the Facebook Keep and the up Twitter with the stuff. Yeah. You know, it's like I'm I'm so far behind. You know, it's like I got to get like a TikTok account for like uh, the historical society. Right. Right. Exactly. To keep we'll it do some dancing right, or something. Stay relevant. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it it just seems like with a membership organization that you normally like you're more, you know, it's a 
um, you know, folks who are older, who are more set in their careers, who have that, you know, money that they can, you know, that, that they can spend, that they're the ones who are going to join it. But you seem to have a fairly younger demographic too. Yes, we do have a fairly younger demographic and there is an under 30 rate. And so those under 30 do get a little bit off of their membership um, because we realize that people under 30 aren't quite as established in their, uh, in their work, in their jobs, in their life. And so to have somewhere that they can come also to create these connections and be involved in the community um, is just as important as having older people who are more established be part of our, uh, not to use it again, but part of our social fabric. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I tend to use the word community a lot. So um, we're rolling with it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I go with social fabric community. We're going we're going that route. Um, I want to switch gears a little bit, but not really switch gears, but it, it kind of comes back to that sense of what we were talking about membership and not being exclusive. Sure. Um, Common House has come out with a diversity and inclusion initiative. Yes. And the first sentence of that, which I wanted to point out, is anti-racism is a daily commitment. Yeah. So unpack that sentence for us. What does yeah. that mean for you at Common House and what you're striving to achieve? Absolutely. Um, so at Common House, it really is through events, through programming, through uh, employee practices, just working on it being a not all white, all male place, all white male place uh, for people to come. Um, and so with me, I am sort of working on, uh, my goal is to create and carry out this programming that not only appeals to our community, but represents our community as a whole also. Um, I want to see black owned businesses. I wanna see women owned businesses. Uh, I wanna see local, local authors and local creators being highlighted through programming at Common House. Um, also, I aim to show members that their voices are heard. I have members coming up to me every day saying, oh, we want to see this. We want to see that. Uh, would love to have some dating stuff for the singles or would love to have date nights for the, for those in relationships. And so I want members to feel like their voices are heard no matter what it is. Um, but also to just programming that you want to that people want to come to, they feel represented by, they feel welcome to, um, and that they want to bring their friends to. So through this social fabric, mm -hmm. uh, this collaborative, you're bringing these groups of folks together, um, you know, by making this commitment on the part, not only of the business model, but in terms of who you're bringing into this to have them, you know, uh, share those same values with you feel that makes an impact on the community around you or are you just impacting the people who kind of walk through the door well hopefully it's making an impact on the community as a whole um because members can bring guests it's not only members who are coming in we're always looking for new different members who may have something to impart and we're always welcome to feedback i always am willing to learn more um, more about the community, more about what people want to see in the community. And so it's not just uh, not just trying to impact Common House as a social club, um, but hopefully that impact spreads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that kind of falls in line with, uh, you know, what um, a Common House member abides by, the, the common law. Yes. The courtesy, the common bond, uh, the sense of the golden rule, basically. Mm -hmm. We yeah. should live by that. But you really, you really can see in the house too, if you come through, people are, if you're alone, you're not ever alone for long. Somebody is going to come up and talk to you and introduce themselves. Um, if you come alone, you are going to be greeted by not only just the front of house staff, but uh, probably a lot of other people there too. And so it really is a tight knit, really cool community that is wanting to bring people, more people into our fold as we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, there's a couple of things I wanna talk about a little bit with the tour that we're, gonna, we're doing for you. But, um, so, but I want first off, um, so I introduced you as the programming manager. 
future. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so lead us through a day in the life of Lauren Thomas, Common House Programming Manager. Oh, what goodness. I don't even know if there is a day in the life because <laughs> things are all over the place. But um, a little bit of the gist of it is I'm in charge of forging relationships with local creators, thought leaders, wellness experts, um, really anybody who is interested in order to plan and host from 25 to 30 is the goal programs at Common House per month. Um, and so, like I said, I want to wow. create and carry out. It's a lot. It is. That's a, right? that's a, wow. That's like a program a day almost. It's almost a program a day. And so, and sometimes two on one day. Um, so I've got lots of meetings with uh, local creators. I've got plugging things into calendars, looking through two different calendars to make sure we've got space for it. Where is it gonna go in the house? What kind of, uh, what kind of things do we need to pull this off? And, um, and then two, are people going to want to attend this? And so that's always the first thing that I think about when somebody, when I reach out to somebody or somebody reach out, reaches out to me, um, is this interesting to members? Are they going to want to come to this? What are they going to get out of it? Um, it's not just to hold programs at Common House, but to hold meaningful and thoughtful ones. So part of some, I mean, your goals are to, sh to have programs. <laughs> of course, yes. And then the, to come back to say like, it appeals and represents the community through which you're serving your members, but also the larger community around. But also the larger community, absolutely. Lots of times when we, I mean, the rooftop is a great example because at times when we have DJs up there, everyone on the mall can hear. And so everybody knows, oh my gosh, something is going on at Common House. That's something that we wanna be a part of. We wanna go see the DJ or we wanna hear the live music on the roof or, Oh, I saw that they have a uh, German club. That's my little plug for my German club that I started. But <laughs> um, they, there are lots of different things, multicultural, uh, different types of music, different types of DJs that, um, and different types of programming that we are bringing into the house, which is really cool. Great. Um, and you've only been there a short time. Have I have only been in this role for two months. Coming up on three, but yes, it's been a very short time so far. Wow. So what have, what have been some of your obstacles, challenges that, uh, is this a completely new position that they've created or is this something that you so This is a position that got passed on to me. It is sort of uh, being reworked as I am the, just the person for the Charlottesville house. And so there is one of me in the Richmond house and the Chattanooga house. Um, but I would say daily challenges, there's just a lot, there is a lot to keep up with. Um, thinking about, okay, what could, I have this program, not many people have signed up for it. What can I do to uh, make it more appealing to boost numbers, uh, to get people in here? Cause this is something that I think is important um, and important for our community to know about. And so how do I market that is, uh, is definitely something different for me coming from a teaching background where, well, I did have to do a little bit of marketing. I taught high school German. And so uh, that's not the first thing that kids go to, but you got to mm -hmm. sort of sell yourself in that job. And so I, there's a lot of, why should people want to come to anything that I'm planning is of course, a question that I ask myself every day. And hopefully it's because it's representative of the community. It's things that they want to see and know. Well, we share the same feelings in many cases in terms of a lot of things, but I think Sterling's got some stuff to work up to there. You know, she's doing 25 to 30 programs in a month. Come on, Sterling. Ooh. Yeah, don't get any <laughs> ideas. <Tom. laughs> it's, it's a lot, Sterling, let me tell you. <laughs> wow, yeah, well, you, Common House, reached out to the Historical Society a, a number of months ago. Um, yeah. Some other conversations about tours and other things that were going on here in Charlottesville, trying to focus in on, you know, what we can do to help you out. Um, and we just had our most, uh, our tour 
uh, our first one this past Saturday, right? Yes. So, and uh, we had 10 people who went on that and uh, seemed like had a good time. Um, is this um, what we're doing to help you out as part of your um, diversity and um, inclusion initiative? Or is it just something that just kind of fell together? Because I know we had talked about, you mentioned there's people that kind of take dual or multiple roles in the common house world where they don't work out of one house, they help all the houses. Um, and right. we started our conversation with a lady over there by uh, Virginia. Um, yes. And then that just kind of rolled into this. So it rolled, yeah, it rolled the, it rolled on to me. And so, um, I think that it does connect to our diversity and inclusion initiative through our um, our educate through educating the masses. You know, we hope to show that Common House cares about and is heavily involved in the community, um, but also to our interest in local history uh, has a lot to do with where we stand, where the Common House building stands on Vinegar Hill. Um, bringing more people into our fold by showing that we do care about this history, the um, important racial and social history that we don't want to neglect or forget. Um, and then also to being a tourist in your own city can be really fun. Charlottesville has a lot of transplants uh, from other cities due to it being a university town. And so a lot of these people may be living here and just not know the history of Charlottesville. And so it's cool to give them an opportunity uh, to have this in more of an interactive way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> well, what I mean, we mentioned, you know, you don't want your club to be just a bunch of white males. Right. And I think I had a conversation with Sterling once about I want to like, you know, push the boundaries with some of our tours when we talk to primarily a bunch of white males who maybe are Virginia or Charlottesville natives that we're telling them a history that they may not have learned when they were in school. Exactly. Um, and right. it goes back to like, uh, you know, what I heard with the County Board of Supervisors a number of months ago when they were determining if the at ready statue should come down and uh, most all of them to a point said I never learned this history and when I went to school. Um, mm -hmm. And I think there's an important, you know, like you said, there's something important there in terms of being a tourist in your own town, but also being a little bit more enlightened with maybe the history that was selected for you over time. Yes. Now, you know, we're telling a more inclusive history. So that's something more important. Absolutely. hundred percent. So what does it mean for Common House to be based in a historic building? Are, is that something that Common House approaches? Is it historic preservation minded that they want to preserve a historic building or does it just happen that way? I think so. As far as I know, it happened to be a good, Common House could exist anywhere, um, but this happened to be a great place and a place uh, that is sort of in the center of where things are happening. Um, and so I think, honestly, I think we could do a better job about thinking about the historical context of where the building is and what that has to do with our membership. Um, but so a lot we of- have a, We have a new tour. That, you know. Yes, right, exactly. And so, I mean, honestly, Sterling probably knows, or you guys both probably know way more about the history of the building I than I do. <laughs> wherever, which way, I can't remember, wherever you are in the Brady Bunch world, you know, Sterling- yes. That's, he, he's the guy for that. Yeah, he put it all together. You know, he he determined that you know the building that you're in was the Odd Fellows Mentor Lodge, mm -hmm. number one thousand four hundred and fifty three of the Grand United Order of Odd Fellows of the World um, that are about as old as the Freemasons, um, and it was a uh, African American um, Odd Fellows um, yes. a club, uh, uh, a mutual aid society, which comes back to this sense of you know, um, the social fabric. Yeah, you know, this community. and Which yeah. these communities can build. Um, so it really makes a lot of sense that Common House is now residing in the old odd mm -hmm. building that was a mutual aid society. You're kind of following in some footsteps there. Yes, absolutely. Um, let's see, somebody asked, what does the Common House expect? Oh, it ran away from me. 
What does the common house expect or want members to take away once they visit? Oh, that's a great question. I think a sense of uh, inclusivity, um, that this is a place where you not only belong, but will love to be and want to belong. Um, yeah, is a great, would be, or I think what I would want people to take away from even just visiting Common House and also too, that it is just a beautiful space. Um, it's, in a very nice location, you know, all of these different aesthetic things that really appeal, uh, but mostly that feeling of home. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was just looking at, um, is Common House looking to expand into other locations? Oh yeah, there is tons of, there are tons of expansion, um, tons of talks of expansion going on. Hopefully we get to like Common House 50, um, where there are, there's a common house in every state and where you go and you're like, oh my gosh, is there a common house in your town is the, is sort of the goal there. And I noted on the website, it, it, it I can't remember what it, how it described it, but it wasn't the large cities. It was kind of the middle range. Yes. At a concerted effort in doing right. that. Right, so there's not going to be one in in DC or anything like that, but like Charlottesville, Richmond, the mid range cities that um, is where where they're looking now. I am not totally yeah, I'm not totally positive what all of the different cities are, but okay, they're coming. And I bet that comes back to that sense of mutual aid where you can kind of maybe have a little more impact with a, a smaller population of folks around you that you know, really exemplifies what you're trying to do. Sure, 100%, absolutely. So Sterling with uh, the tour on Saturday, how do you think it went? I feel like it went great. Everybody about, was What's that? Had about 10 people on the tour and- uh, and Exactly 10 people, and they were all engaged for the whole hour and a half of it and walked away uh, smiling. So I think it went very well. And you're, uh, you know, telling them all about the skeletons in the closet that you were finding in Odd Fellows all across. Uh... <laughs> That's right. And I asked them if they had found any skeletons in the closet, and they would not tell me a thing. Uh, being secretive. It's, yeah, that's the other part of the, those uh, odd fellows. They were fairly secretive. Um, but yeah, for the viewers and audience, you can look it up yourself. Google odd fellows and uh, you'll find different um, interesting stories about uh, human remains found in walls and various things that appear to be some kind of, um, I don't know, ritual that uh, common houses definitely move beyond. Um, yeah. yeah. We try not to keep any skeletons in our closets. Can't blame you. Uh, <laughs> we probably have plenty over here. I just don't dig deep enough to find them. Fair enough. And no need to, you know? <laughs> well, some of them I probably need to bring to light because they uh, are definitely representative of uh, history that uh, we don't, um, that we need to think a whole lot differently about. I'll just sure. Um, Let's see. So with one of the things I, I was able to take uh, the tour with Sterling and, and Lauren when we did a, uh, a little preliminary kind of walkthrough just to get a sense of how it would work. And the, the thing that really hit me um, was that 4th Street or 5th Street, Heather Higher Way? 4th Street. 4th Street. When you, when you sit up there at, at the downtown mall and look down that that street and uh, you know images of that just the iconic painful images from that period like how did people react with that I mean had, did you put it into a context in a way that you think people really you know walked away from that with something well when I did it with the group uh, based on the conversation we had that day actually when we did the practice run I decided not to not to say the, um, not to tell the story that I had written up, even though it was beautiful, but I decided that, you know, these are all people who live in Charlottesville, uh, 
or they're relatively local at least for a while. Um, I want to get their their reflection, their thoughts about the events of August 12, 2017. Um, that and there was still emotion there. There was a lot of uh, um, deep reflection. And I think that was important and, and, uh, and, and a good experience for everybody. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, what, what, we're, what we tried to do, I know what Sterling tried to do with this, was core research and you know, to focus on the common house, the Odd Fellows building that was built in 1913, used as an African-American social mutual aid society at that time. Um, stood it there and was, uh, you know, had the congregation from the, uh, what was it, the uh, Trinity Episcopal, Trinity Episcopal uh, for a few years while their church was being built down at the bottom of Vinegar Hill, um, you know, tell the story of Vinegar Hill and, you know, the pain um, that occurred there, how uh, an entire neighborhood was wiped off the map um, for urban renewal um, and the reasons behind that. Um, and just then to, to contextualize it, to, you know, walk down the downtown mall and to say, you know, in 1830, uh, most of these, the block that you see right here was owned by free blacks um, prior to the Civil War and prior to, you know, emancipation. What does that make you think? Um, and then just to contextualize that this is a, a diverse, complex history um, in Charlottesville that, uh, tells a more complete story. And I think it brings our contemporary issues more into light in some way. Absolutely. Was there a question there, Tom? No, I think I was just spouting off. I was meandering. You know, I got to, <laughs> you've had plenty of the ums on this one. I'm, I'm all about the meandering. <laughs> um, but I thought, you know, that, did you use the Heather Heyer, uh, Heather Heyer uh, quote? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Her um, very last social media post was, if you're not outraged, you're not paying attention. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so with what we're trying to do with these tours um, and working very closely with Car Common House on this partnership is to, you know, be a... Uh, a partner in a mutual aid, you know, society in this, you know, social fabric, trying to, you know, weave this social fabric back together, I guess, in a way where uh, many people look at it and, and realize, you know, maybe things are broken, um, but under underlying it, there's, there's the humanity there that we can, you know, bring it all back together somehow. Um, what stood out for you? Um, Sterling, when you were creating this tour, like what really, you know, just popped? Because you've been, you've been up to your neck and eyeballs and all the things I've been asking you to do to try to get our tours. And when this one with Common House kind of came together, I thought it would be a great opportunity. Um, but what really stood out? Uh, lots of things. The, the fact that, um, the fact that Common House was in the uh, the Odd Fellows building, which is right around right around the corner from the the uh, the Elks um, the Elks Club, you got those two fraternal organizations uh, right there, that close to one another, both um, and both the African American version of those societies, uh, and they're in that proximity. Um, uh, learning that the Elks building was listed in the, the Green Book. Um, uh, digging in, uh, speaking of the um, free Black ownership of property on the downtown mall, uh, just digging into the stories of the Bell, Scott, and Fawcett families, um, digging into the story of uh, Nancy West, um, uh, there's just, there's lots of very complex, complex stories there that were, um, that were just fascinating. 
I mean, I, I could say more, but I want people to come on the tour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I was just trying to, you know, tease the, the members out there. We can uh, share the, uh, the recording of this so you can uh, present as a, maybe a program for uh, fill up one of your 25 to 30 uh, programs in a, in a month <laughs> for your members to kind of help probably edit this down and use it as a teaser for them. Um, look, a couple of questions. Have you hosted dance performances at Common House? No, but uh, I have actually been talking about, talking to um, UVA theater people about hosting theater and dance things at Common House. I'm just not totally sure how that would work in the space that we have. Uh, so trying to figure that out. Um, but I would love to, I was a dancer. I grew up a dancer and danced in college. And so it would really uh, be wonderful to me if we could do that. Oh, great. Yeah, did uh, did your brother get dragged along to dance performances? He got dragged along to dance performances. I like to think that he wanted to come to see his sister dance. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I had a had a younger sister, just a couple years younger, who was a big dancer through all through school and into college. And I went to many a dance performance all yeah. up on the East Coast. Oh yeah, they have uh, made fun of me for certain things. You know, whatever. It's all great. <laughs> No, nothing wrong with it. It, it, it definitely it was something that was a passion for her. And she actually kept up with it in a, a local dance troupe at where she lives. So. Oh, that's amazing. Um, a couple of people are asking questions about how Vinegar Hill got its name. And um, we can respond to those maybe through some emails later. Um, there's a whole. I threw, a, I threw an answer in the comments. Okay, we could do a whole uh, history tour on that. Um, how have common house locations forged good relationships with law enforcement? That's a question from Trish. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, so there have been a couple, I mean, run-ins with the law don't really happen too much at common house. And so I'm not really sure what, but I know that in Charlottesville, at least we have a good relationship um, with the law enforcement here, will they, they'll come if they get a complaint that the music is too loud or anything like that. And often we invite them in. Um, and so we are trying to have it be a place, like I said, where everyone is welcome, even law enforcement. Um, but I am not, yeah, I don't have much more to say about that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think she was just going along with the idea of noise complaints, like you brought up. Sure. Parking issues. Well, everybody in downtown Charlottesville. Has Everyone parking. has parking issues. Yeah. So well. that, that's not just a common house thing. Um, and uh, yeah. So, but yeah, they're they're a part of the social fabric too. It's a matter of uh, you know making sure that we can uh, you know all get along down here in a in the community. Absolutely. They want us to be here. We want to be here, and so yeah, working together. Well, where do you see, I mean, you were just teaching German last year? Or? I was, yeah, last year. And now you're uh, teaching programs to <laughs> common house members. Um, where do you see this going? Like how, where do you see yourself in like a year here in common house? Oh gosh, yeah. I just see things exploding. I mean, I really, membership is taking off. People are seeing more programs that, uh, that they want that relate to them, that they can bring people to, uh, that are exciting. And so I hope to just continue to ride this wave of great programming. Yeah, I think, <clears throat> I think there's a lot of, there's similarities there in terms of what we're trying to do at the historical society and and what you're, you know, bringing, you know, uh, a certain view into Common House with, with how you're looking at programming. Sure. And that being a Charlottesville native, and I've only lived in the central Virginia area for 20 plus years, so I can't call myself a native or, um, but known the area, known the community, um, you know, 
what do you think the past you know three four five years have done here in Bill that kind of opens up maybe an opportunity for what you're doing and like an opportunity for what we're doing with you know trying to tell people that there's an important story local history but then you're also trying to work together on this community the sense of if we can just come together then we can help you know understand each other more yeah absolutely um i think that the past couple of years have definitely noted the need for more knitting together of this social fabric so the need for people to come together the need for uh, people to collaborate with each other, to have like minds together, um, to fight for what we want and what we believe is right. And so hopefully uh, Common House is taking that same stand. Well, thank you for that. <clears throat> yeah, I think, um, I mean, starting this position as the executive director in COVID, um, and you with the same in the sense of going from a, a school teacher position dealing with COVID where you were Zooming your kids, trying to teach them German. Yes, it was, it was something else. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm coming into a position where, you know, a historical society thrives on kind of person to person, personal. In, yes, in, in your in, face, sort yeah. of. And, yeah, and now I'm like, hey, Zoom. You know, it's yes. this online existence. Um, is Common House kind of a, I mean, what? how did COVID affect that, I guess, with Common House? And, yeah, it did. We had to do a lot of online programming, um, which doesn't quite get the same. Coming into the house is what really gives you that include, this feeling of I belong, I'm included, that you don't quite get virtually. Um, and I think that that was the same thing with, teaching with being in a classroom being able to connect with these kids face to face um whereas a lot of times too they weren't required to turn on their cameras during school during class and so it was nearly impossible for me to connect with them and so that in-person uh connection is just so important and crucial um to what we are all trying to do yeah i mean it's amazing like i can just sit here and go click yeah. I'm, I'm anonymous. Exactly. And you don't have to, it's hard for me to call on you. I don't even know if you're there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, there's a silver lining to it. And, and, you know, in my regards in the historical society, like there's no other way I would have been able to connect to our members, our community, except through an sure. outreach. And, and I see that continuing in a certain regards, but I don't think it builds community. Yeah, it doesn't quite build community the same and give and it doesn't quite give everybody that sense of uh, home and belonging that we're all searching for too. Well, Sterling, you see any other questions that have come in or have any thoughts? Um, I haven't seen anything else new come in. Let's double check. Um, Anyone out there has any questions to ask uh, Miss Lauren Thomas um, about a little bit of anything and everything? This is a meandering conversation. So uh, here's one we missed um, in reference back back in reference to um, Common House being in a historic building. Um, have y'all learned any? Have there been any pitfalls? Anything that to learn from in the future when maybe dealing with historic buildings or historic areas that might, you know, have um, any, any, anything, any issues that might pop up there that you've have happened. Let's see, not that I can, I think really we just need to continue to be aware of where Common House is. Um, there's nothing that I can really think of off the top of my head, but I can see, I never want that to fall to the wayside. And so uh, just continuing to be aware and vigilant. Mm -hmm. So Common House Charlottesville started in 2017. Wow. What, what a year to start. I know. Absolutely. Hmm. 
did that kind of shape Common House's thinking about how it approached the community or did it already have that in mind? Before? It already definitely had that in mind. Um, I can say that it pushed a little more towards that goal, but the goal was always to create this great community and communal space. Mm -hmm. Well, I noticed on your website that you have a, uh, uh, a nonprofit member rate too. So uh, yeah, might, uh, might yeah, check out. I mean, our website has got tons of info too. And uh, if anybody is interested in coming by for a day tour or I can arrange day passes to uh, also anybody can reach out to me. My email is lauren.thomas at commonhouse.com. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the website is commonhouse. Dot com. So, yep, yep, exactly. And it's uh, one website for all of the property. One website, and you can get all of the things through uh, all three houses. Mm -hmm. So I could be a nonprofit member in Charlottesville and go to Richmond and Chattanooga. Is that yep. yep. After a few more tours, I'd like to get some perks out of this too. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, we might have to, you know, we're talking about the local history. What was it? Fellini's next door had a yeah. prohibition speakeasy in there. So uh, maybe we do a, you know, a prohibition tour. Yeah. That would be very I, interesting. I used to do one of those in DC. It can be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, well, anyway, I want to thank Lauren for joining us. Um, I want to thank all the people who showed up here for joining us and uh, um any last thoughts, Lauren, to take us out or? Um, oh, I don't think so. Thank you so much for having me. This has been great. Well, I, we love, love to have these conversations with uh, folks in the local community. And uh, Sterling, do you want to take us out here? Yes, sir. I think that's enough meandering for one evening. Um, but before we go, I, as always, we invite any suggestions you have about where we meander from here. Send us your ideas for future guests, future topics, whatever you've got. Just leave them in the comments or email me at programs at applemoralhistory.org. Uh, don't forget our next program uh, in partnership with Charlottesville Links Incorporated will be this weekend, Sunday, um, uh, the 26th at 2 p.m. And again, it's called Breaking Down the Challenges of Doing African-American Genealogical Research um, with uh, our own Dr. Shelley Murphy, um, sponsored by Charlottesville Links Incorporated and Albemarle uh, Charlottesville Historical Society. And remember everything that we do as your historical society is because of your support. If you have not joined us as a member, please consider doing so. Our annual individual membership is only $45. That's a very small amount that goes a long way towards supporting this program and all of our programs. And you will have free access to all of our programs, our research facilities, and our annually scholarly magazine. So please support your historical society. Uh, visit our website to join or call us at 434-296-1492. Unregulated Historical Meanderings is brought to you by the Albemarle Charlottesville Historical Society and all of our wonderful supporters like you. Thanks again to Lauren for Zooming with us today and thanks to everyone out there for joining us and supporting what we do. I'm Sterling Howell here with Tom and we hope to see you for the next Unregulated Historical Meanderings. Until then, meander on. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Have a great night. <laughs>